offer to make recess appointments and rejected three of them. Joining us here at the table is BuzzFeed's Washington Bureau Chief, John Stanton. We would never reject you no matter what kind That's of correct. booking appointment got you here. How are you doing? That, that is correct. Um, this is a, a long case that I was reading through today. It's got a lot of history in it. As we mentioned, unanimous in its conclusion, although the conservatives wanted to do an even larger limitation. But you can actually boil this case down. This is not true of all cases. You can boil this down to one sentence from Justice Breyer. He said, the Senate is in session when it says that it is. Oh. The Senate is in session when it says that it is. And what he meant there was, forget Democrats and Republicans and this particular president. The court is going to defer to the Senate's definition of a recess, even though everyone knows the little dirty secret is these were fake sessions to prevent recess appointments. Yeah, you know, it's funny. For years, for decades, frankly, there was sort of this unspoken agreement that the, the definition of a recess was something over like a week. And um, during the Bush administration, Democrats started to make some noises, well, well, maybe we will, or the Bush administration rather, started saying maybe a weekend might be, or four days, or something like that. And that's when we started to get in this process of having these sort of pro forma sessions that would go on for 30 seconds, and then they shut back down. Um, you know, and I think the White House, you know, was with the lack of movement on its on its uh, uh, nominees, and they decided to basically call the bluff of everybody and, and do this. And I think you know this is part of a broader movement by the Supreme Court to to try to rein in some of that administrative power that we've seen over the last you know three or four years from now. Seems like the court is actually aiding uh, the obstruction strategy that the right has been using for quite a while now. Um, it appears again again that they are behaving in a partisan fashion. We have legal professors now who are saying these look like. Uh, politicians in robes. But it is a 9-0 decision, to be fair. So are we right to look at this and look at the rest of the things that the court is deciding right now and say they are behaving in a very, very partisan fashion? I'm, I'm not so sure. I think, you know, th they clearly have a, a libertarian streak to them. I mean, even the liberal justices clearly sort of have this, this notion that the government has gotten to be too expensive in its powers. The, the executive branch has taken on too much control of what goes on. And I think, you know, you see, if you see Kagan and Sotomayor coming along on something like this, it's harder to, to, to make that case. But, yeah. you know, nominations have always been very political. And, the, and the, 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 the conflict between the judiciary and the executive, particularly on those issues, goes back to Andrew Jackson when he was sort of pushing people through quickly over the protestations of the Senate. And so there's a long, long history of this in this country. Yeah. Another decision we got today was regarding abortion buffer zones, specifically around a Massachusetts law requiring 30 feet buffer zone, 35 feet buffer zone from a clin clinic from the for the health and safety of patients coming in. Um, also, that was ruled to be unconstitutional. But a relatively limited, narrow ruling here, basically saying that the problem was that this was happening on public sideways, sidewalks, public highways, etc. So shouldn't have too broad implications on that one. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see like a wholesale dismantling of the of the safe zones around um, clinics, you know, across the country. I think you know they're going to be able to continue to have like in private things like that. But again, you know, this just goes back to, to, the, to this idea that, that this court is looking very skeptically at, at uh, executive branch and executive actions, whether it's by the states or, or by the federal government, and, and leaning much more towards sort of civil liberties and, and protecting people. Yeah. And on the point of reining in uh, the administration's powers, I know you love a good lawsuit. I love your take on John Boehner now suing President Obama for um, executive orders. The issue itself, I find to be a very serious one and one that we've seen, as you said, happen under both President Bush and President Obama, but the partisan debate to me has become a complete embarrassment. I think it is hypocrisy at its best. Actually, there was a clip I wanted to play yesterday. Neil Cavuto went at it with Michelle Bachman. Let's take a look. You're conflating issues and you're being silly. Where was your rage when no, Democrats, when Democrats were going after President Bush on the same use of executive orders? Because I think you knew then that was a waste of time. Then, and I think you know in your heart of hearts, this is a waste of time now. There are far more important things that you guys have to be addressing than filing lawsuits past each other. What we need to do is defund the executive branch, number one, and then impeach defund, wait, think executive about what you're saying. Defund the executive branch. It who have the, the Congresswoman. Law. It Democrats had said to you, we're going to just defund President Bush. We're going to defund the executive. You would laugh them out, and so, and so you should have then. And we, I think Democrats would be in their right mind to laugh you out now.
I mean, John, this is where our politics is at today. Instead of looking at the bigger picture as a whole, it's always the other person's fault. You know what? Let's just impeach them. That's going to solve all the problems. Yeah, you know, I think uh, it's funny. Like, I do think that there is an argument to be made that, that some of the signing orders and executive orders that have been done by both administrations sort of go beyond the bounds of, of what people traditionally thought of as, as those ex as acceptable. But you know, Republicans have turned this into, it's a bit like the Bush tax cuts at the beginning of the, of, of the Bush administration. Any problem that was going on at the time, they'd say, well, if we had these tax cuts, everything would be fine. And with, with you know, the executive overreach by the administration, that's very much become this thing that, that Republicans have used to sort of camouflage everything else that they're trying to do, whether it's immigration or, or you know, nominations or really anything else. They could say, well, the president is, is gone way beyond what he should be doing, so we're not going to play with We don't trust the president, so we, we can't trust. have immigration reform or we can't have X other issue that there's really But to be really fair, the Democrats did similar on. things when Bush was president. True, Maybe true. not to this extent, but... Yeah, and I think what you're hitting on that's important here is, is a lack of seriousness among the Republicans. There's a political search for a scandal, be it IRS or Benghazi, and then you look at some of the most controversial things this administration is doing that aren't being tested in the court. Um, what are the limits on drone powers to kill Americans? Um, but that's not politically popular. So I would argue legally some of the biggest questions are untouched because of politics. Both parties uh, in that case, I think, have some explaining to do. John Stanton, BuzzFeed original here on a recess appointment booking. We rule it valid. Not pro forma, though. Thank you for being here. <laughs> now, you may know.